Let me throw you some numbers. Let's start with 47, as in AK-47. Ashley Nichols' total martial arts career boasts a record of 65 and 18. Early on, her Muay Thai and kickboxing record was 12-4 and 0. As a mixed martial artist, she got off to a slow start, but went on a three-fight win streak and quickly staked her claim at the top of the ranks. Nichols was ranked number one regional pound-for-pound pound woman in Canada, number one ranked pound-for-pound pound female in Ontario and New York, number one in the Northeast, fourth in the Midwest. She was a problem on the feet, a high-level striking genius that could slowly pick apart the defenses of a mid-level military. Stories will live on as she had one of the most dominant performances in LFA history. She landed 33 knees in round one, dismantling her opponent to a dominant victory. She was, she is the BTC straw weight women's champion. Ashley had turned a corner and with a new wrinkle of wrestling ever growing in her arsenal. She was becoming the martial artist we all knew she would be. Her friends knew it. Her fans knew it. Niagara Top Team knew it. I just hoped she did. She was on the cusp. Okay, don't tap podcast. We are back. It's been almost a month, I think, since I've talked to you on the podcast. I've been listening, though. I've been listening to the MMA locker room. Um, sort of tuning in as a, a fan, sort of listening, you guys sort of going back and forth on, you and MMA Locker Room just love to be on either side of at least one pick, and it's aggressive. It, it's a good dynamic. I like it. I'm glad to be back, man. Uh, it feels like back at home. A uh, little NBA break in the calls, getting into the springtime vibe. So uh, get back into You've been a lot of college stuff, too. It's been busy. Yeah, college stuff. It's a good little time of year. This is back where I can get deep into the gills and uh, no, no better time than uh, UFC Mexico. This is going to be a banger of a card. Uh, all of last week, I, I did good last week, but I wish I would have put more money on the bets because I was so excited for this week. Uh, this week, it's such a good offering of a card that uh, last week, I would, thank God I had a good week, but I wish I would have put more money on the bets because um, this week is definitely a banger of a card. This is a pay-per-view in itself. It was one of those cards where everything sort of played out as a lot of the, the spots I thought landed the way they did. And it's like in retrospect, you're like, God damn it. Why didn't you just trust yourself? But myself, I've been on a skid for a while. Um, Toronto just mucked me up a little bit, I think. And uh it was a good bounce back as far as at least at least morally, at least like, okay, I, I put this together. Like Anthony Hernandez, everybody was starting to really love Kopalov and that. But what they missed about Kopalov was is it's, it's his self-paw kick to the body that he works to get that head up. And Hernandez doesn't give you room to land that kick. He's always on you. He's sticking to you like glue. And uh, he, so Kopalov has to set that strike up. He sets up his KOs. He doesn't land his KO. He sets it up. It's always a setup yeah. shot, right? So with a guy like Fluffy, it was just – Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And I thought decision, I, I gave Coppola more respect on the, the get up from the ground. Um, I thought he'd be able to at least get it up and make it a little bit more, you know, of a Death battle. Mixes and, uh, no dice. Anthony Fluffy Hernandez round two or three sub. It's just everyone. But the overcashed. Thank God. The yeah. overcashed. Because it almost didn't. Hernandez had a choke pretty much almost in. And Coppola somehow gritted it out for a little bit longer. Um, but, yeah. Um, okay, well, let's take a look now. There's a pretty good offering this week coming up, and I think you and I are on the same side um, as some. UFC Fight Nights, Mexico. We have Moreno, Roy Val, too. Uh, let's go with your first spot to the table, UFC Mexico. Let's go. Yeah, um, first spot I'm going to talk about is actually uh, scheduled as the first fight of the night as of right now. Uh, Mohamed Nayamov versus Eric Silva here. Um, Eric Silva. Trained in Mexico for this fight, coming out of Venezuela. We saw him in his UFC debut on that uh, Jan Blockowitz and Ankalaev card a while back ago. And uh, he fought TJ Brown. And the biggest thing coming into that fight was uh, cardio concerns. 
And um, that fight definitely did not confirm. It, it confirmed that he, his cardio is definitely a question, has all round one finishes in the Lux Fighting Organization. Once he came over to the UFC, got a step, a slight step up in competition, and he kind of fluttered out. I mean, TJ Brown's definitely a guy that we know he trains with Bryce Mitchell, but he's not some world-class wrestler or anything like that. I mean, Muhammad Naimov showed me, a lot in his uh, first two fights in the UFC came in against Jimmy Malarkey as a big underdog and then came in also again against Nathaniel Wood uh, had him as a dog play on that pay-per-view at plus 200 so uh, I think the market's kind of corrected it itself on uh, Muhammad Naimov open around like minus 250 we're seeing it at minus 300 already um, I think it's a good parlay piece for this weekend I think he has the ability to finish him in the later rounds Probably look here at around two or three knockout prop on FanDuel once that comes out. But uh, I like Muhammad Ainov in the parlays to get it started for this weekend. Yeah, I think I like that spot there. It's not something that I've dug into too much, but I just from you know past looking at these guys, Eric Silva just doesn't seem to bring it, put it all together the way you think he should. The technique is there on the feet, and he just doesn't quite. He should be finishing guys. He should be setting guys up and, and finishing guys. He doesn't quite get there. Um, Naimov is just sort of a presence. He, he imposes that will and that pressure, lands big shots there. I think I think he wins this one uh, pretty handily, to be honest. Um, even if it went to scorecards, I think um, you know wins big moments and just the the pressure and, and owning the cage and whatever else. Um, but in the future, when someone makes it a little bit greasy with the grappling, he's going to gas out likely with those arms. You're going to see one. You know, there's going to be a fight where he's hanging those those arms nice and low, a uh, little muscly. I mean, little all work. things little considering, work. Little work. Like, uh, Jamie Malarkey, Nathaniel Wood, and now Eric Silva, I feel like uh, theoretically it's a step down in competition significantly, in my opinion. Yeah, it's not a bad spot, man. I mean, I didn't – it was a spot I was – obviously you look at almost every spot to see where you want to play on the card, but it was one that uh, sort of interested in more maybe in the in the fate of Eric Silva, and I think maybe that's why I stayed off it because my I sort of started that a fade. Um, but, yeah, I see the spot. I see the value for sure. I'm going to uh, bring in my top spot, and I'm going to go right to almost the top of the card, and we're going to go to the co-main event. I'm going to just, I'm just going to go with my boy here, Rodriguez. I'm going to, I'm going to jump in at minus 163 early. Um, the line I'm, I'm good at, even at minus 175, I'll pay a little bit of chalk. I, I think that Ortega will likely get him down a couple times. I think that uh, Ortega, if he doesn't get him down early. His subs actually are going to present less of an issue. And I know that he has put late subs, you know, even on Volkanovski late in fights that were really tight. I know his guillotine is instinctually really, really tight. And he can get that even when he's beat up and whatever else. But I just can't get behind Ortega at all in this fight. I really can't just on the basis of a, a guillotine or a sub. I think that Rodriguez on the feet is just leaps and bounds way better. The volume is very similar, but it's a different fighter on the feet. Uh, you know, I mean, Ortega literally is famously known for Holloway stopping the fight to teach him how to play defense, right? Like he walks down the line, he gets hit. Um, you know, he has some power and some decent technique in his hands. Don't get me wrong, nice jab, but he just gets hit. He, he doesn't come in on angles the way he needs to, doesn't escape on angles the way he needs to. Um, there's no game there that way. And I think that when there's moments on the feet with this, you're, 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 you're yeah, yeah, Rodriguez is going to make this a problem. And I know Ortega is likely going to be on the hips for a good chunk of this, too. I know he's likely going to get at least two takedowns in this fight. This is a five round fight, though. And I just think that I don't, unless you think that Ortega subs Rodriguez, then you got to go on the other side of this because it's going to play out on the feet to some degree. And even if there's a lot of hip hugging and tries for takedowns more so than anything else, but Rodriguez lands some big shots, he wins the decision. I'm on Rodriguez. I, I like the line. I'm okay with it at the, the minus 163. Minus 175, a little chalky, but I'll hit it. Yeah, it's actually uh, – I think the story of the fight is more of the layoff here for Brian Ortega, man. Um, uh, just a guy that hasn't historically been too act, uh, active, so – it's hard to really judge how much development he's really making in his games. You see some bright flashes here and there, but um, I think the, the combination between the elevation on this card and the layoff five round fight, first round, the first fight back. I mean, damn, man, that's a lot to fucking ask for. Uh, the more and more I think about it, uh, maybe I got to sleep on it a couple of nights. I kind of like the under. Uh, since this is a five round fight, I imagine this would be under three and a half. I think um, Ortega has the chance to get 
at some random ass submission. But if he doesn't, I could definitely see him getting up and out of there before those five rounds are up. I don't see this one hitting the scorecards. I think Yair. I can see him getting starts for sure. Yeah, like I could definitely see Yair finishing him and him just being like, fuck this, I'm done. Okay, now that uh, that, that piece is uh, on the table, let's hear your next spot you want to bring. Yeah, uh, the second spot actually caught me by surprise. It was one of the first fights that I actually ended up looking into for this card. Um, Luis Rodriguez versus Denny's Bondar here. Um, I'm I'm liking Lazy Boy here in this matchup. It was one of those fights that uh, kind of brought me back to the beginning of all of this. Uh, one of the first Contender Series seasons that I ever gave out content for was that 2020 season. And the first fight was Jerome Rivera versus uh lazy boy and man um i had to dig back deep and i was like it was like a plus 200 underdog and i felt like i got robbed after the fight and i rewatched the fight and man it made me relive some memories man um he looked really good in that fight man he was able to land on jerome rivera it was one of those uh judges type of decisions where it came versus volume versus control time granted i'll give jerome rivera credit i mean he was landing some nice jabs and stuff like that but the bigger shots in the fight were landed by uh luis rodriguez he was able to get a couple of takedowns and he was fighting that contender series fight against a legit prospect i mean jerome rivera granted you could say what you want about his ufc career but for the regional scene man he's definitely fought the who's who of the regional scene and uh I think the damage can definitely be done here on Denny's Bondar. Kind of a similar matchup to his Carlos Hernandez fight in his last fight. Uh, he was able to get taken down a couple of times. Uh, once the fight got extended, he definitely showed that uh, he's a little bit wet behind the ears. I mean, his regional scene is, I honestly can't believe I'm saying this, but worse than uh, the average, I would say, person that you would really see on these type of spots. I mean, all, every time he's gotten to step up in competition, he seems like he's ends up taking these L's. Uh, I don't think he's that good, man. Um, I think Luis Rodriguez, this is his type of spot. Uh, it's going to be his UFC debut in Mexico, the Mexican fighter here. We're getting him at dog odds, um, hometown fighter. I think he's more skilled, faster, stronger, um, moving down a weight class, coming down from bantamweight back to flyweight. Hasn't fought at fly, flyweight since that Jerome Rivera contender series fight. Um, I think he's going to be able to do what he wants in this one, either get a late finish or win a UNAM decision in his UFC debut here. I like this spot here for Lazy Boy. Yeah, this is one um, I was initially looking at Bondar, but not even really like solidly. It was just the name that jumped out at me and more just because he is a fade. And, you know, like I remember being on the other side of him, even with Gordon and um, really not liking what you could see on tape. But, like there is some decent stand up there, but um, this one I didn't dig into too much. Um, so for me, I'll just sort of keep my mouth shut on this one because I don't know too much about Luis Rodriguez. I didn't, I haven't really dug into too much of his tape in the past. Um, but just didn't really refresh on anything this week and, and take a look at this one. So I'd be speaking out of my ass and I'm just not playing that game. So, but uh, I will trust you on that one. I just know that Dennis Bondar, he's not of this level. And if what's the line right now? Uh, plus 100, minus 120. The line actually opened up at plus 160 at DraftKings when it uh, initially on the opener for, opener for this card, and it's crashed down to plus 100, minus 105. Pick them in some places. I think this is one of those uh, lines that are going to end up closing as uh, Luis Rodriguez as a slight favorite as minus 130, minus 140 as the week goes on and people do their research for the fights. I will bring my next spot to the table. It's uh, it's a little chalky two piece. Um, so it's the first time that I'm actually going to back this gentleman because he has proven to me that he he really does have it at this level. He isn't just a one trick pony with the submissions. He isn't just a, a young kid who talks much smack that you can't really understand. Um, I'm gonna say Rosas Jr. and uh, I'm gonna go with Charles as a parlay. Um, I just think that we're gonna see. Um, Rosas Jr. is going to style um, in his fight. I, I, when this hits the ground, I just don't really see much of a, an, an opportunity there. Obviously, I, like even on the feet, man, his his his, uh, his game on the feet or sorry, on the feet is actually getting much much better. I know he was on a kill cliff for a little while, training as well too, and stopped in there. So he's, he has been going around to other gyms as well. Minus one twenty for Chara's and for Rosas Jr. 
I just think Rosas Jr. is going to to style again and either have full control of the back and full control on the on the on the ground for the most part and maybe win a decision that way and or it's going to be a submission. Um, I, I don't really see that going any other way. And then if we look at Chara's, I mean that that fight was pretty much over, right? I mean that fight was pretty much done. And we can say whatever we want about whether his arm was limp or not and whatever else. He wasn't like losing that fight up until that. Yeah, hundred percent. Like he was getting landed on. That. On the feet is not the same thing. There's one guy who's a sloppy striker, one guy who's a little more of a clean boxer, Mexicano boxer. The guy's going to come in and just, I think, style on the feet um, and prove that he was stronger on the cage, prove that uh, he'd go in and sub him as well, too. So I'm with Charles on this one. I think it's just a good parlay piece. Um, minus 120, not a bad little chalky parlay. Uh, Rosas Jr., Charles for me, my second piece. Yeah. Um... I just got that nasty taste in my mouth on for Rojas Jr. that uh Christian Rodriguez fight. And I don't You were heavy, you were heavy. Yeah, you had like, like we had like reels on it. You were like you were all in, I know. Yeah, I was all in. And like the biggest thing that came out of that fight is honestly his cardio. Like I, I think Ricky Torres has the better cardio here in the spot, but I mean it might not even matter. So I don't know. I, I gotta I gotta dig into that one a little bit more. Not a lot of information on Rojas Jr. when he's gotten into Mexico. Uh, he's usually trains at Las Vegas, so I don't know if he's fighting at sea level for this training camp. There's a lot of question marks in this one. Ricky Turquoise, uh, if you look on his Instagram, he's been in Me Mexico since I would say at least three weeks now. So he's definitely acclimated a little bit to it. So I got to do a little bit more research on that one. Um, it was one of those ones when the fight card first got announced, I was more attracted to it. But um, I got to – there's some checkbox I got to clear for uh, Rojas Jr. This might be like a weigh-in one where I start feeling a little bit more comfortable. But um, I'll talk about my second uh, spot just, here. Sorry, just one second before you jump in. Because um, I didn't really dig into it too much just because it was a two-piece, so I didn't want to – digging too much like on my end anyways i wanted to hear what you had to say but with tercios i just think on the feet he's just like the volume can be there but it's just, he's not a threat at all and i think that rojas jr actually is a little bit more of a threat um on the feet with power anyways not necessarily with the cleaner striking um and i don't think he's going to get lulled into that kind of fight i think he's going to be able to, i think rojas jr is not going to really feel any threat and be able to march him down and just sort of take him down now um tercios he Obviously, an alpha male guy. I, I feel bad for fading alpha male. I love alpha male, but um, even his wrestling, which is decent as well too, is not going to really stand up here, right? Because even if he goes for a takedown, he's going to lose position somehow at some point. Um, I think so Rojas me, I just, Jr. should win. It's just, I mean, I know you. Know, I'm just trying to. Re I'm trying to make you feel better about your, you know, your your. Remember, I wasn't heavy on Rojas Jr. before. I was sort of fading you in that in that pick. Not exactly, but I wasn't really feeling it at all. Um, and I just think this is a spot for him. So just to make you feel better about it, but don't, don't, don't go, uh, on my account. It's just so, it's just really hard to judge his fights. Cause it was really the contender series fight that sold me. It was like a minus 175 in that spot. And I, it's just, I mean, Terrence Mitchell, I can't take anything from that. Made, made my money back, but it's just like, I don't know, man. I, there's, one I'm probably gonna have to let the week go on with, um, but I don't mind the Daniel Lacerda Charles fight. Uh, I think the under might be the way I go. I think violence is the way. Daniel Lacerda. It's not a bad way to play it. Yeah, he literally just fights for five minutes. He looks like uh, he looks just fine, like he should be in the UFC for five minutes, and then after those five minutes are done, it's just kind of over with. Um, that's yeah. sort of one of those double down spots. If I have the parlay and then I have the under on that one, um, you know, if Lacerda some, somehow lands a big shot, I still at least get something out of it. If not, I get a double down hit. So I might uh, might sprinkle that too. Not a bad way to look at it. Yeah, one of those like maybe like fight not to start round three if you're on pain, duel under one and a half if you're on a book that has totals. Um, but I will say though, on that main event though, uh, I really like Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Royval. I think this is a fight that favors him very heavily in this one. Usually I don't like betting on fighters that are fresh off of title defenses. It's usually like a trend that you don't really want to bet 
into, but I like Brandon Moreno in this spot. I think he's better than Brandon Morival everywhere. Uh, he made work, clean work of that first matchup, and um, I think this is more of a setup fight for him in front of his home country to get this W against Brandon Morival. I love Roy Val. He's one of my favorite fighters at this weight class, but – um, I think Brandon Moreno should style all over him. If you look at Brandon, Brandon Moreno's uh, Instagram and his fight camp and stuff like that, he's training with the top level BJJ specialist here. Um, I think he's going to come in here and I think he's going to get a rear naked choke here finish. And uh, it's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to be a very action packed main event, but Brandon Moreno is going to style all over Brandon Morival here in this fight. Uh, I think it's one of I think it's a very modest line. I mean, only minus 245, 250 for Brandon Moreno for a guy of his resume. I mean, I love Brandon Morival, but the, uh, there's a clear A side and B side in this fight. Yeah, I mean, I think that you're on the right side of this. I mean, Brandon Roy Val, when it comes to Moreno, when it comes to Pantoja, he seems like he's at their wedding and he's the bridesmaid. Um, and he's just not going to get on the like he's never going to figure it out with those two. Um, and I love him too as well. It's just, you know, with, with Moreno, he's going to be cleaner with, with the striking. Moreno's going to be cleaner on the ground. Um, and sometimes Roy, Roy Val seems to sort of waste energy. And though, although he does have good, decent cardio and he can push to the end and he has all that fight in him, he just sort of seems to waste energy at times um, where the cleaner fighter will likely win there. So I think Moreno is a good spot as well. Come on, let's say it. I know you want to say it. Let's look at your agree. Um, no, no, what, what do you think I was going to say? The dog? Yeah, I thought you were going to say no, that, that, that's you. you, didn't, you didn't I thought we were going to no. talk about the Christian Quiones and Ronnie Barcelos fight we're talking about. Yeah, him. I mean, I was looking at it. Barcelos is somebody I have on my ticket 100% and, and I could bring to the table as a top three, third, three spot. Um, he is on, on the ticket that I have, I'm, I'm putting online. Um, I think the, we might as well just talk about it anyway, so they're able to chop it up. But, you know, minus 170, I just, I'm a little bit worried about him maybe fading at a moment or, or mentally being out of the fight at points because it does happen. But I, I think there's a level to this with these two. And I think that um, he's like, I, I think Kunona is maybe is the wish version of him with a little bit less rest, like wrestling and grappling. Um, Marcelo's, I never thought I'd say this would be maybe a little bit cleaner on the striking, even though he's still a little bit wild with it. Um, and then as the wrestling too, you know, averaging what about two takedowns a fight. Um, so yeah, I think that's the side on this one. I didn't want to really invest too much in this and make it a spot for myself. And uh, perhaps maybe I should instead of going the way I'm going to go. But I'm going to go with the prop. Um, line isn't out yet, but we're going to go with the Uruguay. I think Uruguay decision is going to be the play. Um, as much as people might want to look at, at maybe a finish. I, I know obviously she get caught. She gets caught in her last fight. There's a little bit of a maybe a fade of her. You think, but the lines are not fading her in this one because I think you know the matchup against Sam Hughes. I mean Sam Hughes. She's a gamer, man. She's in it. She's. She, she's a very well-rounded set. I, I, I backed her last year. She had a pretty solid year as well, too. A, a, you know, a little bit uh, up and down at points, but for the most part, she's just come a long way, I think. Um, mixes up her wrestling and her striking well. She does a lot of that in-between stuff really, really well. But that being said, I just think this on the feet, she's going to be in the world of – like, she's going to get picked apart. And it's just – if Uruguay wants to go into overly aggressive, which I don't think she's going to do, I think she's going to probably be a little more hesitant, point fight this a little bit more stay on the outside, stay a little bit more safe. I think this fight at minimum goes to the over, but there's probably no value there. Um, so I think Uruguay, yeah, I think it's like minus 200 or whatever. Uh, Uruguay by decision is going to be the play for me. I don't know if the line's out yet, but uh, Uruguay by decision. I even flirted with the idea of Sam Hughes maybe even winning a round with maybe a takedown or two um, and looking at the spread play. But I think I'm off spread plays, man. Spread plays are because I'm getting like, like who did I have last week? Spread play. I had uh, no. who was my spread play last week? I thought you had Paulo. It'll come week. back to me, but it didn't land. It didn't land. I thought it should have, but um, oh, oh, Jeff Neal, Jeff Neal, Jeff, Jeff Neal. Neal. Yeah. It was a split decision, and you think and you're thinking in your head, but then obviously uh, the way the numbers work out, it didn't land right with the scorecard. So. Anyways. Yeah, no, that, that shit's crazy, man. Uh, but it's funny, though. It's almost like I feel like I should have just went with the dog instead of, you know what I mean? The value of the dog instead of even doing the, the spread there. So, yeah, it's like he just, like, he could have just bet the dog straight up and just, yeah, like, well, it was just better value. Anyways, yeah. man, well, just do it, right? Um, but yeah, okay. You, uh, let me know what you think of that spot. I mean, you agree, obviously, um, you know, maybe just got caught in a situation. You know, it is what it is. Any fighter can get caught. But 
I think leaps and bounds way better on the feet, no? Yeah, I like there. I like her in this spot. I'm actually thinking about using her as a parlay piece with one of these little minus 200 favorites. Uh, I definitely think uh, this fight is kind of accustomed. I mean, the last fight, man, to be honest with you, like, I mean, we don't want to read in the narrative theory too much, but I mean, the girl Denise Gomez won on National Denise Day. I mean, could you talk about a fucking better spot? Like, it was her birthday week and shit like that. Like, I mean, sometimes the stars just align up sometimes on a night. And this game is a brutal game that we play MMA. And just because you have a nice little shiny record doesn't mean that O isn't bound to go one day. I mean, we just saw one of the greats of the featherweight division just get absolutely slaughtered in the main event. I mean, no, no O is destined to go. I mean, like shit happens this is the mma world and this is the game that we play um i think she will bounce back and look nice in this one and uh all good graces and we'll be looking at that fight one day as a damn man she lost the Denise gomez how did that happen like one day we'll be looking at her record like that yeah i think uh i think she you're definitely right is it, you know it, obviously it was a little bit more of a cost than you'd like to see uh for her in her last fight but i mean there's going to be hiccups along the way i mean even actually i'm going to have uh, mike malad on soon he's had his hiccup um you know maybe moral maybe maybe as like a you know a mental a little bit of a hurdle for him now because of coming off of that loss and the way that it was at the end but physically he didn't incur damage, which is very important, right? So he can bounce back from that. He just got to turn. Yeah, I think he's already all fired up. He's all ready to go, but turned a corner. Obviously, um, uh, well, I'll get into that anyways. Niger top team going through a little bit of a tough time right now. So I think that they're all focused on some real things right now. So, um, but yeah, okay. So we have that spot pretty much uh, played out. What is your final spot? I'm actually going with a prop though. Um... I'm okay, gonna no, go. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm gonna go with a prop. It hasn't came out yet, but uh, Chris Duncan's Do one it. of my favorite, one of my favorite fighters. But one thing I'll say about Chris Duncan, this is not a good stylistic matchup for him against Manuel Torres. Uh, I would be shocked if Manuel Torres doesn't knock him out in rounds one or two. So it's gonna be one of my uh, props this week. Probably the prop of the week is uh, Manuel Torres round one or two knockout. Um, this is a great stylistic matchup for him. Uh, as much as I love Chris Duncan, the only way I see him really winning this fight is if he just cage wrestles, but I don't think he's going to. He do needs that. to call Anthony Hernandez and say, what do I do? Yeah. yeah, yeah do right like, now. Don't, don't talk to Dustin Poirier. He, but it's he, Chris he, Duncan, man. We've seen Chris Duncan fight before. I mean, if you're a fan of Chris Duncan, you know how Chris Duncan gets down. He ain't going to shy away from nobody. He's going to throw down in the middle of the cage, and they're going to go bomb for bomb, and that boy's going to get knocked out this week we can't clip the video because i'm a fan of him i was on instagram but uh, i think he's getting knocked out this week this is not a good stylistic matchup for him we'll get him on the comeback probably again at plus money later on maybe on one of those english cards but in mexico for this one this is a horrible travel situation uh this you know what you just you just solidified something for me so this is obviously a spot where you know someone's going to sleep if, if duncan were to try to figure it out but See, Duncan, it, it sort of scares me because it's wrinkle of wrestling, right? So I kept, as I was going through this, I'm walking through Torres, KO, Torres, KO early, then seeing like, what if Duncan just wrestles heavy? But the one thing that you just said was Mexico. So at the end of this fight, if I take KO with Torres and Duncan has ran a wrestle heavy game plan coming out in that third round, you know full well Torres is going to throw hellfire and brimstone I don't, think it goes, I don't even think it goes that far no i i, I agree i'm just looking at all the than five minutes i really no, i get it i get it i'm just looking at all the ins and outs and we've seen duncan get caught even when he didn't get dropped we've seen duncan sort of get rattled back and uh, no i see it i'm just looking at all the outs later this fight goes it kind of favors duncan that means he actually got molly whopped across the cage a lot and he isn't down yet uh I think this one doesn't go longer than seven and a half minutes. This is going to be one of those minus 300 under one and a half. Uh, Mango Torres is I, – I, I, somebody's getting knocked the fuck out in this fight one way or another, but I just heavily favor Mango Torres more than what the intended line is. I mean, he's only a minus 140 favorite. I mean, yeah. Knockout prop is going to be like plus 175, plus 200 if you just uh, get in rounds of one or two. So, I mean, it's going to be a good – 
I think it's a good prop, not a good straight money line bet because now you're including all three rounds. But the prop and the cap of the fight is uh, this is one's going to heavily favor towards the knockout. And yeah, I mean, all I was suggesting was it would have to be like Duncan would have to literally sit on him for like two rounds and just pretty much like lay on, like try to hold him down for two rounds. Um, but the Mexico City thing, like if it did ever happen in a worst case scenario, if you're on the Torres side, late in that fight is still it's still live early in the fight is hell like it's really live um there's one space on my ticket right next to my prop so i have my parlay my three money lines and my one prop that's uh you know your decision and i may just have to drop torres ko there and sort of tail you on that uh to reaffirm something i was already sort of liking and i think everybody's sort of liking that this week but um you just reaffirmed that really well and i think that uh definitely that cardio thing is going to play uh, a huge factor man huge factor i mean i think that's the story of the fight of these fights cards this week is uh not even you know how we always talk about betting on hometown fighters in certain spots this card's a little bit different man i mean there's a huge uh, advantage that's going to be given to these uh fighters that are used to fighting in elevations i mean altitude and elevation are theoretically the same words, but altitude, I think more of like cold, like Colorado, Denver, Utah type stuff. But elevations, I mean, like this is going to be in the heart of Mexico City at a pretty fucking high elevation. I think this is going to be the highest elevation that we're going to see all year on a card. One thing to look at, too, is and this is where I was actually looking when I was looking at uh, Claudio Puelas. I mean, I don't know how he's going to be with his gas tank in, in Mexico City as well, too. But when you have people who gas later in fights, submissions are going to be live. So whoever are submission artists that have instinctually get to submissions, there might be some live submissions because people are just dying. It's very common that one or two people pretty much almost die in the cage in Mexico City. Um, so I wouldn't uh, be surprised if you see someone just sort of get dragged down at the side of a cage, rear naked choke, even from a guy you would never expect to get a sub um it's very commonly happened so i will also um, give the other side of the coin i call it the Derek lewis side of the coin sometimes uh when you put these fighters in uh altitude and they know that they're not in the best cardio spot they just say fucking and go for it i mean when true. Derek lewis fought in salt lake city he knew if this fight goes longer than five minutes i'm taking a loss and man that boy go for it in those five hmm. minutes i mean who thought he was gonna throw a fucking flying knee across the cage <laughs> for sure okay now between you and i um if we were to put together a two-piece parlay i mean i could i could see one right now um but let you bring your first piece and then i'll i'll tail that with whatever uh whatever you're bringing to the table um the way we were talking about the co-main in the main event i feel like we should just go co-main main i usually don't like parlay. i don't mind that late a late parlay i like those ones yeah i usually okay. don't uh parlay two fights back to back but i think the co-main and the main are are really the it's the theme of the event i feel like uh these two fighters really are getting really good stylistic matchups from the uh, matchmakers here, I feel like. Yeah, we can even You're go right. two yep. leg. And then if you want to uh, juice it up, we throw a little bit of Raul. No, let's two leg it up. Let's two leg it up. Two legs two are legs. safe. They hit, man. Two legs hit. I, 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 I see a five leg on this card, though. I would say if I had to say five legs, Muhammad Naimov. You can tell I haven't been doing well because I'm like two leg, two leg, no five leg, man. What, what have you had legs for? <laughs> no, nah, man. I think this is. Uh, I mean, I think some dogs are going to bounce back this week. It's going to yo-yo around when these big favorites are going to lose. But um, so, what was the piece? If you want to add it, we can make that the bonus piece. Um, I mean, I don't want to be whack and say Yasmin Yerigui, but in my heart of hearts, I would say Yasmin Yerigui. But okay. so we'll add that in. That's not even a really a, a risky yeah. bonus piece, I don't think. So you can add that yeah. in, and then always in a worst case scenario, if that doesn't hit, then you go to sort of read up again. If you really are hell bent and love the parlay in the main event, it is what it is. Be a degenerate and 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 dig in. I'll probably do it. So I'm with it. Um, on the out, I'll all I will say is rest in peace to Ashley Nichols. Um, the MMA community in Ontario has been hit pretty hard in Canada, pretty uh, you know pretty hard and across the board. I know there's a lot of people feeling it right now. 
um, check on your people, man. Check on your people. You never know who's who's struggling and who's who needs the help. Fighters, especially, it's why I, I'm I always walk the line and and I've really tried to you know watch my words with you know who I'm talking about and how I talk about, it, especially when I don't have the right in certain respects, right? Rest in peace to Ashley Nichols. Um, AK-47, what a badass woman she was. And, and I didn't even realize putting together a reel for her. And that'll be actually at the top of the show. You'll hear it. Um, her stats and where she was regionally, she was the top of everywhere, right? At, at pound for pound, at pretty much everything. Pretty much ready to crack. And it, although she was, you know, a little bit later um, in, in her 30s, she was so high level in her striking. And the fact that she had found wrestling, she was going to be a problem, you know, and maybe just crack into the UFC, even just a crack into the UFC for her at this point would have been a huge, huge, huge victory. So um, rest in peace, Ashley Nichols, on the out. Um, it's great to chop it up with you again, man. Yeah, condolences to Ashley Nichols and her family, man, a moment of silence. And uh, there definitely be a little, little, little something on the stories this week for her.